It was just a short stop at home. Back to work. This trip is gonna be a little sad because I don't got diesel with me. I know, I know, you can turn away from the video if you want. I know you're just here to see Diesel and Chevy and Frank. You got none of them for the next couple of days on my channel. If you want to see them, you can go over to my wife's channel, Red's Beat. It's down below in the description below this video. You can go click her link and go subscribe to her channel there. This trip, it's just me. It's me and you. Just setting up the truck here right now. And uh, I'm delivering this freight to that same place that gave me trouble for having a dog last time I was there, so I don't want to deal with that again. I left Diesel at home with his brothers and his mom. she has got lots of family around him, right? Uh, he'll probably have a blast. You know, blankets and stuff set up here. Because I can actually have my bed set up the whole time now, and it'll stay clean. It's gonna be so weird. It's a really cold morning again. Not as cold as it has been, but it's cold. It's minus 26 or so. I think it went down to minus 27 this last night. But the rest of the week is supposed to start warming up and we're, we're at the tail end of the deep freeze of winter here in Manitoba anyways. This is the last week approximately of our cold, cold weather. It's already starting to warm up. Like, it's not minus 35 anymore. Now it's minus 25. And next week should be even warmer as we approach March. And then spring is on the way, just around the corner. So we made it through winter, guys. We made it through the worst of it. Of course, I'm getting every light red in Headingley here. Just fueled up at the Flying J. I like fueling up there because I get points there. I'm saving up, saving up my points. There's supposed to be a scale up ahead here, from what I've heard it's closed, or there's supposed to be a closed scale, I should say. I know there's a scale. Just outside of town. And then it's pretty much just boring prairies all day today and tomorrow. So you guys know what that means, you gotta put up with my boring voice talking about nothing. Not much to see out here, but then again, those of you who aren't from the prairies or Midwest of the US, you may not see flatlands like this every day, so maybe it's interesting to you. I don't know. You can see your dog run away for three days. That's about the most cool thing about this region. <laughs> it's cold, a lot of farming, a lot of oil out west, the western prairies, a lot of oil. Well, there's a lot of oil just sitting there, waiting to be used. It's not really being dug up right now. There's 16,000 jobs in Alberta lost in January alone. 16,000 from the reports. That's all oil field jobs because they're uh, just hurting out there. That's why that convoy is in uh, Ottawa right now. There's so many people losing their jobs and families not being able to supply food for their kids. It's getting real bad for them out there. And the, the load I have on me right now, these steel plates, they're going to the oil fields as well. One of the few ones that are still operating. Here's the scale, and it is closed. And a closed scale is a good scale. Believe me, they're the best ones. Everybody says it. Everybody knows it. The closed scales are the best scales. Believe me. Well, we stopped in at Mooseman. Didn't get my regular Timmy's there, but uh, back on the road, I got a co-op coffee. We're back on the road and something's going on here. Look at this. Flashing lights. And remember flashing lights in the province of Saskatchewan, you are required by law to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour or just below 40 miles an hour. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's a truck in the ditch. There's a truck in the ditch. This is Highway Patrol. Oh, Peace Officer. Saskatchewan Highway Patrol. Oh, same thing. Okay. Oh, somebody. That's not where you were supposed to bring the pigs, buddy. Whoops. Oh, the bacon's going to get all cold there. Well, I guess it's going to be even colder once it gets into my fridge and my freezer, so... 
<laughs> so I have another, uh, what do I got? Eight hours to go to my destination. I'm not gonna make it quite all the way there today. I have a reload in the city of Edmonton. That's taking me back to Winnipeg. The load is actually going down to Iowa, but I'm gonna take it to Winnipeg and another driver is gonna take it from there. I need to go home. This truck needs a little bit of work again. I know, right? Again, eh, it's gotta go back into the shop. That's trucking for you. Uh, my, have I told you this already? My oil feed line, uh, where you pour the oil into the engine, simply, simply put, has a crack in it. And when you pour oil down there, it's supposed to go into the engine, right? <laughs> well, it goes onto the ground for me. That's not good for the earth. Not good for my pocketbook either, because that's wasted oil on the ground. It's no good to me on the ground. It has a crack in the oil feed line. Uh, so I need to get that replaced. And uh, taking it to the shop in Steinbach, where I like to go, and getting that replaced. I also have a, a, a hum coming out of my front driver's side steer tire. I don't know if you can hear it or not. You have to sort of know what the truck sounds like to hear. There it is. It almost sounds like rushing wind, but I know my truck. That's not wind gushing over the truck. Gushing over? Rushing over. That's my wheel hub or my wheel bearing, I think. I think. So I need to get a mechanic to look at that. I think what happened is when I delivered my last load into BC, that load of glass, to get into their yard, they didn't have a proper driveway built yet. It was still just like a curb up. They hadn't like, you know, made it a driveway, but that's the, the only way to get in there. And I hit the curb pretty lightly. I didn't, I didn't just rocket myself over the curb, but I, I guess I hit it just a little too fast, like a little bit, I don't know. But when I hit it, I heard a click. And ever since then, I've had this humming noise that I feel is getting louder. I don't know if it's just in my head or not. So they've got to take a look at that. I've just replaced that wheel hub too. And if it broke again, it's a waste of $900. Fix it again. Now what else is wrong? Oh yeah, my steering wheel's not lined up. I don't know if that's connected to that wheel issue, but my, my steering alignment on my steering wheel here isn't lined up, so I'm hoping they can fix that. It feels like I'm making a left turn all the time, but I'm going straight. So my, my truck's gotta go into the shop on Monday. Uh, so I wanna be home, so I'll pick up the load Thursday morning in Edmonton, I'll be home Friday, midday. Saturday we're doing our donation. I know we, I thought it was last Saturday. I know I told you it was last Saturday I made a mistake and I think I forgot to even clarify that with you guys But maybe you know already because I'll probably release a video sooner than this that uh, we're doing our donation From the leftovers from Frankie's surgery our fundraiser we did uh, We promised to donate that and we're giving it to uh, in a donation to a uh, shelter in Winnipeg and Manitoba that helps dogs find uh, homes. Pretty much, I, I believe they find stray dogs from up north and they bring them to the city and try to find a good home for them. And they need food and play pans and toys. So we're bringing them a whole pickup bed full of food. And Britt's vehicle is full of toys. Excuse me, I'm spitting, excited. Full of toys and stuff. So we're doing that on Saturday. On Sunday, I believe we wanted to go visit my sister who was involved in that accident recently. And on Monday, this truck's going into the shop, and Tuesday, I wanted to do nothing. I just wanted to sit, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I might have to go back to work then. We'll see.
And boom, found a spot here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We're staying here at the Flying J, just on the other side of town from the gym. Uh, did a pretty good workout today, I think. I got an hour of walking in, burn a little over three cal 300 calories. What else was I gonna tell you? Uh, I did uh, the Rolling Hills route again. So uh, the, the treadmill, acts as if you're on hills right so it'll go on more of an incline go down you guys know how they work right so i did an hour of that and then i did some back exercises before i left the gym and now we're here and i am ready to sleep one thing i like about getting back into working out regularly is that when it's time for bed it's time for bed and i'm ready to sleep there is no like ro tossing and turning rolling around because i can't sleep no my body is tired the hard part is getting up in the morning because that's usually when I'm the most sore, right? But I'm getting used to it. Eventually, it won't be that bad anymore. But thanks for watching today. Glad you're here. Otherwise, I'd be all alone. I don't even have Weasel here with me. It's just an empty bed there. Can you see it? Here, let's turn this light on here. Oh, 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 see? It's, it's just an empty bed. But it's a clean, empty bed. That's something that's not usual, right? You got dog hair all over by now. This will be a clean trip. Tomorrow I have to deliver this load around midday. I made my appointment for noon, but I'm going to try to be there for 11. I did that on purpose because I want to be there early. I would rather be there an hour early and surprise them than be there an hour late and surprise them. And from there I got to head to Edmonton on Thursday morning or the next morning. We have to load a load of lumber that's taking me home. Uh, I have to get home for this weekend. I was telling you earlier, we're doing this donation, uh, sort of like a food drive, I guess you could call it, for dogs. Getting going to get our whole pickup bed full of food. It's going to be a couple of thousand, well, a couple of thousand? how much money do we, I, I haven't even looked at the numbers yet. We've been, we haven't been putting this off. We've just been waiting for an opportunity when they can accept the donation and also when I'm home at the same time that they can accept it. That's why it's taking so long. But we're gonna make a whole special video explaining everything, I promise. I know I've been saying that for like a month already, but it is coming. It is coming, we're doing it this Saturday and that's why I gotta go straight home from Edmonton with a load of lumber that's just paying for my fuel pretty much. But I promised I was gonna do this and we're gonna get it done. And we're gonna take you guys along with us. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And it's gonna be really cool to see the, the looks on their face when they see how much it added up to and how big of a donation we can bring them. I think we'll be pretty pleased with how much we can we can do. So, uh, like we said, and we promised like that extra money, that's not for us, that goes to help other dogs in need. So thanks for watching. I think I already thanked you. I'm gonna thank you one more time, okay? Thank you for watching. I hope you tune in tomorrow. Hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. If you did like the video, if you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down button, doesn't really matter to me. If you engage with my video, either way it helps me, I don't care. The thumbs down helped me just as much as the thumbs up. It really doesn't do anything. But uh, I'd prefer it if you did the thumbs up. I like that one better. It's, it makes me feel nice. The thumbs down kind of makes me feel sad sometimes. But actually, you know what? It doesn't really matter to me anymore. It used to. When I first started making videos, I'd get a bunch of thumbs down on a video. And I, I sort of had to l learn from experience what topics to talk about, what not to talk about. And sometimes I know that I'm getting into a topic that's going to get me a bunch of thumbs down, but it doesn't really affect me anymore because that's one thing YouTube has done for me. It's really boosted my, I guess, self-confidence and self-esteem. Not to the point of where I'm super arrogant. I don't ever want to get to that point, but it, it, it's gotten me to a point where, you know, I believe what I believe and I say what I say, and if people don't like it, that's okay. That's okay. I never mean to offend people. I never mean to get in people's faces and I know that so if they feel like I am targeting them or you know trying to start stuff I know that I'm not so it doesn't really bother me when they get all upset people can get upset if they want to and, and say whatever they want to I, I rarely monitor my comment sections I always read them I'm always down there reading your comments but I, I rarely remove comments usually only if they're like super super personal insults to my to my family my wife sometimes i get a little protective depends what mood i'm in depends what the comment is but as a rule i let you i, I want you guys to say whatever you want to say down there i mean i'd be pretty hypocritical if 
I would be a, an advocate for my own opinions and say my own opinions and then stop you from sharing yours because that's how I learn. Sometimes my opinions are wrong and by hearing opposite opinions, I can learn. I'm at a point in my life where I've sort of, sort of dug in my roots of what I believe, but it's still nice hearing different opinions, right? It's always nice. I, I always encourage people, don't block that out of your life. Don't block out, uh, don't get yourself in an echo chamber like Twitter. Oh, I do not like Twitter because Twitter is filled with echo chambers. People only follow people that they agree with and that think the same way they do. And then they all follow each other. They all like each other's tweets and they all retweet each other and they don't realize that they're in an echo chamber. Uh, try to get outside your usual, you know, your usual groups and dive into what other people think. I did that today. I went onto Twitter and I went into a couple of echo chambers where I didn't belong. Whoo! Believe me, I realized pretty quick that this was not my echo chamber, that I was the oddball out. And I stated what I believed and I left it there. They tore me apart and, uh, well, tried to, you know, threw every insult and slander and buzzword in the book at me, but hey, at least I know what they think. I tried to challenge them on what they believe. I didn't get any answers. I just got a bunch of insults, but hey, makes me feel better about where I am, because if all you got is insults to throw back at me, I think I'm doing pretty good. So, once again, thanks for watching. I've been talking for too long again. I'll see you tomorrow.